morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to another episode of On the Couch with Creatives. I say good morning because I'm here in the UK, but good afternoon or good evening if you're anywhere else in the world. I'm Melanie Perry. I'm Julie Hadmew. And this is On the Couch with Creatives. Fans and followers of the show will know that we're part of the Creatives Group, a private network for creative professionals across the globe. Together, we help you to create, connect and grow your creative business. So if that sounds like you and you'd like to join our ever-growing network of creative professionals, do feel free to contact us after the show. But as I say, this is On the Couch with Creatives. So Julie, who do we have on the couch today? On the couch today is Jay Stansfield. And Jay is an artist whose children's brand of the Squibbles received the Indie Best Top 10 Colouring Books in 2021. He's the founder of Squibblesville Studios. His 3D modelling has been exhibited in Miami and New York. Uh, he's based here in the UK. Let's get him on the couch, Melanie. Hello, Jay, thank you for joining us. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Well, you call yourself a multipotentialite. I've never heard that term before. So, so please uh, explain to us. So that is actually a term that I rec recently discovered in the last year or so, um, which basically describes someone who has so slight neurodivergence and focuses on many things. You know, they say the jack of all trades, master of none, but multipotential really is you skilled in multiple areas, um, which is something I've been developing over the last 43 years of life um and it's in sometimes it's frustrating so i i was glad when i discovered that term because it, it kind of helped me a little bit to understand that i'm unable to just focus on one skill like a lot of people can focus i know, i don't know they could focus on just illustration for example that would be handy or they could just focus on video editing that would be handy i sometimes dream about that life uh, but I'm unable to do that. It, it causes a lot of frustration, a lot of stress, a lot of emotional upheaval for me. So what I do is basically take all my skill sets and bring them into one thing usually. It'll be that or this or, you know, I'll be, I'm able to apply them all to one thing. So you're not simply an artist. You have the potential of being an artist in everything. I suppose so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I love that term because, as you rightly say, Jay, um, and we've been discussing this a lot um, on, on other um, shows as well, is that people who really do have tongues of creative talent are people who are neurodiverse and are people who think in a different way and perform in a different way and can do things that other people can't. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, it's funny because it, it, it kind of used to, when I think back to primary school, um, it came out then too. I used to draw in my books a lot, but I used to draw in my books because I felt that it would highlight like a story that I was writing or something, or even maths. Um, I used to draw things in my books and try and apply the different topics and to other topics, you know, because I could never... Focusing on one thing, like focusing on maths, for example, I found very, very challenging. It was really challenging for me. Uh, it used to upset me, actually, because maths is very, it, it's very logical, isn't it? It's very, you know, this is what it is. There's no other number for it. One plus one is two, for example. Um, and I used to struggle kind of having to have that disciplined mindset for that particular subject. I actually cried before I went to high school because I was so concerned about maths mm -hmm. that's horrible no, I can relate to that because I hate I couldn't ever get my head around maths either and my son struggles with it as well and he's always drawing and doodling and getting told yeah. off like they have, they have they have whiteboards now that they do stuff on and he's always getting it taken away from him because he's, do, he's drawing on it rather than doing what he's yeah. supposed to do. and I just said to the teachers the teacher oh and it's so awful because he's such a bright boy and blah 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 and I said well he's an artist 
deal with it. You know, he's not ever going to do anything with maths. Let him have the iPad and let him make a fortune, as, like you say, as an artist or an illustrator, because quite frankly, I don't really care that he's not that fussed about maths, really. Yeah. I don't so, so experience. You make your living then, um, Jay, because as an artist who who is not good at that, um, how how do you actually bring in the the wonga? That's a good question. <laughs> um, it it kind of comes from various sources. So my the most recent job I had, for example, was a video editing job. So money came from that. Um, money has come from. Um, I worked with Bookmark Reading, a charity who help children learn to read. They have a program where they, for this particular one, they were providing boxes for children coming over from Ukraine. And so they asked me to illustrate the lid of, the, of these like 3,000 boxes or however many there were. Um, but they also bought in a lot of copies of Squibbles, uh, the colouring books to put in the boxes as well. Um, so that that was kind of an income source there. Um, so it comes from all over the place. It's very, I will say it's frustrating. And I know that anyone who is self-employed will know exactly what I'm talking about. There are periods where there is no income. And I find that that's challenging, but I've, I've learned to let go of that over you know recent years. It's really important not to get too worried about that stuff because things always work out especially if you keep going and you're always pushing yourself and and you know moving forwards it's inevitable but it's still difficult when, when there is no income that's a challenge yeah. and it's, um you know you should uh, if you love what you do the money will come uh maybe me and i are still waiting for the millions but uh we're holding on to that precept keep going honestly that's that's the mindset you know it's got to focus on that for me you know i mean i've got a i've got a big dream i, I want to make a million from the squibbles that's that's my goal just to see what it's like having a million i mean I, it's not because i want a lambo and i want a you know a, a big yacht and stuff or, or whatever um i just want to know what it would be like and and i feel like Having a dream that big actually involves a lot of big decisions, a lot of challenging decisions, probably a lot of challenging moments because that amount of money doesn't come easily, does it? And when it does arrive, you've genuinely, you've got to be ready. You've got to be like the person who is ready to have that. <laughs> yeah. As I said to I was talking to somebody about, um, I think we are talking about winning the lottery or something. And I said, you know, there are people who win like vast amounts, especially on Euro millions. They go from being like a normal person to having maybe upwards of 60, 70, 80 million, you know. And it's like people, that, having money doesn't solve all your problems, but it brings a whole set of new ones. You know, you're going to have to know how to manage that money and, and people that are going to suddenly be attracted to you because of all that money and inland revenue and <laughs> scary things like that you know you're gonna, <laughs> inland revenue. Um, you know you have to know about all this stuff and not knowing about somebody you know I think anybody just needs a really good financial advisor who understands that stuff because to me it's just like oh, I can't well we have financial advisors in our creators group and Thank they you. are people who know math and know how to and one and one, and know how the creative minds work, and um, and they specialise in uh, in in providing services to creative people. But let's get onto the squibbles. Tell us all about the squibbles. The squibbles, the squibbles, fill me with joy. I have to say a lot every day. Um, the squibbles, they, they've they've evolved from lockdown, as many things have. Um, because I've got two daughters and they were both off school um, and they were home learning with the laptop and the horrible frequencies of the speakers, etc. And I just thought, you know, it, it was relentless. There was no space. There was no real space for them to breathe, really. And, and I just thought, how how many other parents and families are going through this there's so many like millions um and i just thought what what could i do to alleviate some of that phew, claustrophobia if you want to call it call it that so 
I started drawing some characters to create a colouring book. I thought well, it'd be a great idea. My wife, I was discussing it with my wife as well because um, she loves my illustration. She's always admired my illustration. So she's, you know, we, we were sort of like discussing it. I thought, okay, let's do a colouring book. So I, I put together, I started drawing, took a, a week or so, something like that. Um, and I had about 30 characters, 30 pages, and I just wanted to make a book. So I thought, what's the best way to do it? And I, I came across Amazon KDP and I thought, let's give it a whirl. So I basically just uploaded it and published a colouring book. And that's where Squibbles was born. And some of the characters from that I turned into a reading book, which is Meet the Squibbles. And those characters from there have kind of taken on a life of their own, especially Colin. Colin is, is the guy who likes music and records and chilling out a bit, but he likes exploring as well. Um, and so he's kind of become the flagship character for the Squibbles as Colin. He's currently a crocheted version of Colin, which my mum has done. She's fantastic, just from a drawing. Ha he's on his way to America at the moment. I've got, um, what's on my board? One, two, three, four, five, six. I've got about seven people who are prepared to take him in for a week. And they're going to be taking photos with him in various locations and he's got a little nfc chip in his headphone so if you just scan it with your phone you can upload the photos that you take with him and those photos are going into an interactive experience that you can that you can view on the web and they're also being turned into nfts that are going to be combined into this one big nested sort of nft um for people to maybe buy one day um, and you know, generate some funds for the for the Squibbles animated TV show. Yeah, that would be good. That would be good. And, and I mean, look, looking at your, I mean, I used to work for Di for Disney. So whenever I see things, the first thing that kind of goes into my head is the the commercial viability of something, and you know, where can you put it, and what can you do with it. And when I first saw a little clip of uh, the Squibbles on YouTube, I mean, it is it is eminently um you know brandable and and you know I, I see I saw them as plushies you know the characters as plushies that yeah. they're bright and they're colorful and I think yeah. you know young younger children would would love to have these lovely plush plushy characters and I think that you could do a lot with it merchandisable that's the word I was trying to yeah. think of. I've got brain fog this morning merchandise merchandise, merch. merchandise. Merch, merch, merch. Merch. <laughs> yeah exactly so pictures pictures and plushies and stories and yeah. tv series and a film you could bring a film I mean, that that with Moshi, didn't they? And Moshi had a, with a thing and bedtime stories, and they put brought out a film of it. You know, you know, who knows where it can go? Yeah, I mean, though, all those things are just entirely possible, and that's they're what I'm kind of pitching to potential investors about um, who can help with the animated show. You know, we're, we're actively looking for investment on that. It, initially, we founded it through uh, selling digital collectibles or NFTs, or digital collectibles, digibles. Um, so we've got a, a few people who have, you know, funded it initially. It was a very small amount, of minimal amount, but regardless of that, it managed to get it rolling. Um, I'm not sure if it's sustainable trying to fund it through digital collectibles. Um, again, it, it's still such a young technology. I, I've got high hopes for it, for sure. and I, I want to integrate it into the Squibbles along the way. I've built quite a community of people who are into Web3 and into digital collectibles and stuff, who are massive supporters of the Squibbles. So that's part of it. But traditional traditional investment, uh, we need it. We need it. We need, we need someone to say, here's this, show us what, what we're going to make back. And we can say, well, we've got you know the potential for merchandise, licensing, all these things can Amy, come yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah, because it's it's hard to get a TV series. I'm I'm looking at developing something, and I, I read a fantastic book called called TV Development Guide of how to get your idea from your head and pitching to the various people. And for, to get a film, an indie film made, is a lot easier than trying to do a TV series because yeah. TV series are so expensive yeah. that they're only really picked up by the broadcasters. 
-hmm. you know, unless you're doing it on YouTube and doing it as a little indie thing on YouTube that may or may not go anywhere, it, it's very hard to get things that you're putting out on YouTube picked up by a big, so by a net, network TV like, you know, I see squibbles on something like Nickelodeon or, um, you know, Disney Channel or, you know, the the, the big ones that will see BBs or, you know, um, but it's hard, it's hard to get your foot in the door and to get them to sit up and finance something so like that. That makes me want to do it even more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's know, doable. I'm, it is yeah. doable, definitely. But, um, yeah, wouldn't it be lovely to see it on your know, mainstream? You turn on the TV and there's the squibbles. Yeah, it'd be pretty fantastic, for sure. So what are you thinking of? Are you thinking of, like, a 15-minute daily episode or, or what are you... So the plan is twelve episodes for 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 one for the first series or season for for America, um, episodes between like twelve to fifteen minutes long because they're aimed at younger children. So they they're going to involve a little bit of drawing at the beginning, and then the show moves into a story, and then there's a there's a bit to wrap it up at the end, teaching children about values and and self love and things like that. So, and kindness and community and inclusion yeah. and all those wonderful well, things we need more of. <laughs> but, they, but they will be rollicking good stories. Absolutely, yeah, of course. Yeah, teaching children how to navigate through the world in a in a respectful and wholesome way, really, but also fun to watch, you know. And well, relaxing. Like say, fun, <laughs> yeah. And relaxing. That, 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 for me, there's too, there are too many bombastic, like, noisy, Blah, cartoons out there um, and personally based on my, my own daughter who watches a lot of that stuff I'm not I'm not so sure it's the best for young kids to be watching you know it's all right to have a peaceful show mm. you know you think of an animated show people meet up, immediately go to this like wild sort of crazy noisy place I'd, I'd say but, you know, the squibbles, I, I want it to be more of a relaxing, I don't say like 80% relaxing, you know, mm. with with some fun thrown in, a bit of drama, but nothing yeah. too crazy. Nothing, nothing too frenetic. Yeah, mm. because I, that, that that has, there was a study done, and I can't remember the name of it now, but there was a study done that some cartoons on mainstream TV are actually damaging our children because... The, the flashing of the images and the, the changing of the se the sequence of the images is so quick yeah. that the, the kids are absolutely frenetic when they come away from the TV yeah. and they're kind of like addicted to it and they you know their parents are having a real hard time getting them to calm like calm down afterwards and there has been a study that's saying actually there are certain cartoons that perhaps your children shouldn't be watching because of the pace of it so bringing things down a little bit and making it up dare I say, safer for our children to watch, you know, I think is not necessarily a bad thing. No, and I wanted to base it on the, the things I watched as I was growing up in, like, the 1980s. There was a lot of cartoons that were very well-paced. They weren't, like you said, frenetic. Um, and I, I want to... It needs that vibe. You know, there's going to be a lot of static camera shots. There's going to be... It's, a lot of stillness and, and just slight movement and things with a like I say with a bit of drama thrown in but not not lots of scene changes you know like the classic stop frame kind of bag post style animation I, love I used to love watching Heidi and and not as a little kid as as a teenager the animated Heidi series I loved it and all she did was wake up run down the hill run up again pet a few sheep and I just loved <laughs> yeah, the simple simplicity wins most of the time. I think we we lose track, we lose touch with simplicity. I think, especially when it comes to children. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I think on that note, we're going to just play a little trip clip of the squibbles. We've got a trailer that you sent, so let's just take a look at the squibbles. <laughs> So that was your first look at the squibbles. And Jay, people can can they find the squibbles on YouTube? Where can they find 
They can. That they can find the squibbles on YouTube, yeah. If, I mean, if you type in the squibbles, they will be able to find it. It's youtube.com slash at the squibbles. Um, YouTube changed the formatting, so, yeah, they can they can find it there. Well, we've got and the you found well. Squibblesville Studios in order to drive this whole project forward? Yes. I found it's very important to have some accountability and, and I know for investors they just wouldn't want some guy and his mates making a cartoon you know and I, and I wanted to show that it, that it is that it is serious it is a professional production and the company is is very dedicated to bringing nice things for children and families so I wanted it to be more kind of you know official really it's it's, a, it's the official umbrella corpse for the squibbles. Well, the wombats used to be very popular. There's no reason why the squibbles can't be. There we go. Let's hope so. Absolutely. I mean, they do. Going back to to, to say about children's TV. I mean, I grew up. Yeah, it would have been sort of eight eighties, I guess, where I would have seen most of my my children's TV, and they had some really lovely things for children like button moon and um the flumps and yeah. you know all the things that you, you remember like those i really I remember with the fact of finger mouse and things like yeah. that. really simple stuff that were just so lovely and you know there's only a few things that you know i've got a son who's nine now um and he some of the stuff that we used to watch you know on cbb's or whatever and some of it you thought oh that's really nice you know i, I love the octonauts because that you'd learn quite yeah. a lot with the octonauts i like them but some of it was just absolute like i can't and you know that no we're not watching that again <laughs> <laughs> we're not watching that again <laughs> yeah i mean something that used to stand out for me was bing that was quite oh, well yes, bing, yes i wasn't was keen something. yeah i wasn't massively keen on the stories they were a bit lackluster no offense if anyone from bing is watching um of course but that's just my critique i just found them a bit a bit boring yeah let's talk about your 3d modeling what kind of you know t talk to us about some of the works you've done so i've been 3d modeling for a considerable amount of time um since my 20s actually but i've never really put anything out there because I just it just wasn't my focus, I suppose, in, in that area. There was no room for it. Um and plus my computer wasn't really that good good enough to render scenes and things. Um but since since the squibbles, I don't know, the, the stars have aligned, I don't know, but some software came out called Nomad Sculpt and after investing in an iPad, uh, which ramped up my productivity tremendously. Um, I mean, I've always had iPads, but I thought, you know, I'm going to get one with a pencil and everything, um, which I managed to fund through digital collectibles, which I was absolutely buzzing about. So we did, we, I've done this. Um, but Nomad Sculpt is basically this fantastic 3D sculpting program, similar to some software called ZBrush, which I used to use back in the day. And honestly, it's been amazing. It's it's given me such a fantastic opportunity to create a the squibbles in three D, which ju has just been fabulous, and b actually find a few clients where I'll turn their two D illustrations into three D characters, which I love doing. I don't know. There's a bit of a link there with my mum in there. She just turns three D crochet <laughs> from two D. But yeah, I I started doing that, and it's just honestly, I, I I love 3D sculpting so much. Honestly, Julie, it just gets me there. It's there. There it's, we can see. We yeah. can see your passion. It's wonderful. I I love things in 3D as well. And that could be another income stream for you know, as well. Turning things from customers into sort of plain 2D to yeah. 3D. It, even like I mean, you could do that with logos. Maybe even having a nice yes. 3D logo, swishy. You know, we might have to come short. That's a swishy 3D. You know, swishy logo. I, yeah. I love stuff in 3D. It does. It it just makes it come alive, doesn't it? It's, it's fantastic and it's very modern as well and I've always had an interest in it anyway. I, I mean, I've had computers since I was seven and I used to be absolutely in love with the chart show 
graphics. I used to say to my mum and dad, I'm like, it's graphics that? And they'd say, what are you talking about? Like, it's been done on a computer, it's 3D, and they just didn't believe me. How can they not understand that? So, yeah, I've always had a vested interest in 3D. What do you think the technology of three, yeah, the sort of three D will look like? You know, a few years from now, because technology in the drawing and art space has come on so much in the really in the last few years, you know, and and the, and the AI kind of um, space or VR space, should I say? Not AI, that's a, um, the VR space. Um, could you see the schools becoming like a virtual reality pop up in somebody's living room? Well. <sighs> Uh, there's so much to talk about. The <laughs> so currently, I'm working with a chap called Lee Probert and Carlos Santoriello, who is helping with the um, is bring, bringing the schools to life. And we're doing a, a an adventure around London in AR. So basically, Colin has found a portal in Squibblesville because he loves adventuring and exploring. And he's gone through it, and he's found himself kind of lost in London. So the Squibbles have realised that he's gone, and they discover this portal too. So they've followed him to London. And so families are able to go around London, different locations, and do little quests, collecting things, and interacting with some of these Squibbles that are they're kind of looking for Colin, but they've got a bit distracted by, <laughs> by the sights of London. Um, so you can basically just interact with it, and and it's so far it's looking really really great. It's really great. I mean, I love I love VR. I've been into VR for about a decade, and I, this time next year, I mean, I'm a huge fan of AI as well. I don't care if people don't like it; they're just scared. Um, I say this time next year, we will literally be speaking 3D environments into existence. We will, and I, I know that based on the based on the rapid speed that AI is growing, the things that I've been experimenting with and looking at is guaranteed. We'll be able to speak our environments into existence, which excites me so much. It won't so you excite could actually me. be walking through the streets of London with the squibbles and playing the game, play, you know, playing a game with them. Yeah, so, so you, finding treasures and... Yeah, so you can take your phone out and you can, you can find the squibble and you can interact with the squibble. In that way, I yeah. That. I can see that. Yeah. That's happening. I mean, we, we're looking at that in the next couple of months or something. Yeah. Hopefully we can get it out there. Yeah. Oh, that's the first exciting. Time I, I had a, a virtual reality experience. I went into space. It was mind-blowing. Yeah. Mind-blowing. And then I went onto the stage with the Rolling Stones. Amazing. <laughs> fantastic. So I can imagine walking through the streets of London with the school. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, it'd be brilliant. Yeah, well, when you launch it, please tell us. Oh, absolutely, I will. I'll keep you. I'll keep in touch with that one. Yeah, absolutely. And you, and you also have another string to your bow. This multi-talented man. God, we could an hour is not enough, Jay, to talk to you. We'll have to do about you know like a, a, a series or something. Um, talk to us about All Hail Hyena. Sure. Um, so, All Hail Hyena is the band that I perform in and write songs with. We've been together six years. We're from Burnley in Lancashire, which is, I mean, I'm from Colne in Lancashire, so very close. But we've been we've been doing really well. Um, last year, we had a video go viral on Reddit. So we were asked to perform in the garden for one of our, like, our number one fan, basically. Sorry, Jeff. And his wife got asked us to play as, as, as a for his birthday slash their anniversary. So we were like, of course, you know, this supports us so much. And this is a lesson for any band out there, you know, support your fans. If they support you, you support your fans more. Make it a game. See how much more you can support your fans than they can support you. And so we went to the garden. It was such a hot day, like we were melting. It was so hot. But he had no idea that we were going to be performing in his, his garden. And he turned up and it literally blew his mind. It, like, seeing his face was just, it was difficult to keep it together, I have to say. 
Um, but someone filmed it and they put it on Reddit and it just blew up. Like, people think it's amazing. It's had over 12 million views on Reddit, which is just fantastic. And that's absolutely blown our band up. Like, everyone went to our Spotify. Everyone went to our YouTube channel. And we've we've got, you know, at one point earlier this year, we had upwards of like 15,000 monthly li- listeners on our Spotify, which for us is just mind-boggling we absolutely love it we're so grateful and it's just kept going so we've been added to playlists um and we've we've just been doing really well on the back of that so you know it's been fantastic (laughs) and for those of you who want to see that famous garden clip here it is Goodness me, artist, 3D modeler, musician. You really weren't kidding when you said you what was what was, what was the word? Multi multi multi-potential eye. Multi 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 potential I have to say, I'm I'm not like a huge fan of labels and, and like I, that's I suppose it's for me more than anyone else to keep myself, you know, grounded in the fact that if if I feel like Oh, you know, I'm, I'm flapping over here, or oh, I'm not focused enough on that. I can, I can bring it back and and feel a bit more comfortable. Yeah. Well, we can't pin you down really as anything. I introduced you as an artist, but you, you some, and, and you're a musician and everything else. Uh, is there something you can't do besides math? <laughs> DIY. Yeah, why? Can't do DIY. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, can't even put a shelf on a wall. Well, oh. hopefully your wife is, is good at that. She's not. She's terrible as well. So <laughs> oh, well. you're still there. <laughs> then you pay somebody to do it. I know. Yeah. I know. What yeah. are your top three tips? Now, because you are into so many things, I'm not, I'm not quite sure how to ask you what your top three tips are for musicians, for artists, for 3D modelers. But as a, as a, as a very creative person and potentially... In with fingers in every creative pie, what would your top three tips be to people who are like you? Um, I'd say worry about money less. It's not worth it. Genuinely not worth it at all, ever. Worry about money less. It's not easy, but worry about money less. Um, I'd say take more risks. Life is genuinely not long enough not to take a risk on something and if you take a risk and it goes wrong what's the worst that can happen you know better to take a risk than not do it at all because you don't want to start building up a bank of regrets um and my third tip is don't listen to gurus there are plenty of people out there who claim to be gurus. If you ever see guru in the title, just block them. <laughs> Maybe not that harsh, but, you know, um, yeah. Don't, don't listen to gurus. Just just listen to people who resonate with you and, and, and who show respect. Those are my tips. Fantastic. Very good ones. And and I'm going to throw one in there as well, was I think was um was one of Rob's um along the same lines is you know, don't listen to people who haven't been there and done it themselves. You know, so there's a lot of people who love to give creative people advice from their nine to five, sturdy, boring job that's sucking <laughs> their soul out. And you know, it's just like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> it's easy to give advice when you've got a nine to five. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> or an inheritance, or you're a trust fund baby. <laughs> yeah, or an yeah. inheritance, yeah. Wouldn't that yeah. be good? No, I'd like to be a trust fund baby. <laughs> not, I'd I, I like to be. Say, um, I, you yeah. know, please, please, in the words of Del Boy, I love, love only fools and horses. You know, one of his, when, when Del was beseeching, you know, because he's always after the money, so please, God, let me prove to you that having money won't spoil me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, we are while we wait for the millions to roll in. Yeah. yeah, we'd just like to thank you so much for chatting to us on the couch. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's that time, Julie. It's that time. Oh, it's that oh. time. Don't cut oh, me off. God, we cut me off without the cards. Jam. Oh, I beg your pardon. Here I am saying goodbye, and we haven't finished. And I've oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm going to have sweat then. While 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 Melanie um, gets all tactile with her her cards, the values jam. I'll explain it to you. The values jam. Um, uh, on every card is a value, and on the on the back of every card there are a series of questions, and um, it digs deeper into your psyche and also makes you think a little bit. I hate this out of the box. It's so stupid. But um, she's going. To, you're going to pick a value. You're going to pick a card. It's going to have a value on it, and then she's going to ask you a question or one or two, and you just spew out whatever comes into the creative mind of yours, no Absolutely. matter how ridiculous you think it is. <laughs> yeah, this is the on the couch part of on the couch. Just going to let our, our let our let our viewers get to know you a little bit a little bit better. Right, I'm going to run my finger along the top. You just yell, stop. Stop. Right, in the middle. Right, what have we got? I knew it would be that one. Ooh, this is a very, very good one for somebody like you. Um, and well, any creative, really, and anybody who's got their own business, certainly. But from what we were talking about, as you have so many different things that you have on the go, you picked adaptability okay adaptability now there's usually a set of questions that i like to, to ask but julie doesn't like me asking them because she, she wants me to mix things up so i'm going to ask no, i do like you asking them but we ask the same questions all the time okay, so ask I'm... another question on the card right, i'll ask another one okay so for our, for our regular viewers we're breaking the tradition we're going to ask a completely different question now um okay how do you think more adaptability could improve the world? Ooh. I feel that my friend's phrase here is relevant, which is adapt and overcome. Because people are very quick to panic people are very quick to give up and i feel those things only happen because they're not prepared to adapt to a new environment or a new way of life or a new mindset and adaptability is it takes practice it, it, it takes the the ability to shift your mindset, which is a fantastic skill to learn, and always seek that out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because if something doesn't work, you have to adapt. Or, adapt. as they used to say um, in South Africa, when a part they were trying to convince the government to 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 wrap up apartheid to end it, basically they said adapt or die. Yeah. So sometimes you just have to. It's quite an extreme view, but yeah, it's, it's yeah. kind of true. <laughs> and as a musician, my next question, I'm going to get one of these in. Your next question, as a musician, if adaptability had a sound, what would it sound like? <laughs> um, hmm. Ah, it's a frequency. Ooh. It's a frequency. <laughs> <laughs> it would be that. I think that's Someone vacuuming. I listen to frequencies. It's quite amazing. They're very relaxing. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Fantastic. Drawn. I love that. <laughs> right. We, I'm now going to say thank you so much for talking to us, Jay. <laughs> so sorry about that. But uh, earlier, but. Uh, I would like to say thank you very much for talking to us. Um, <laughs> as Melanie says, that you 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 have so many fingers and so many pies. We could talk about 
all of them forever, really. But we wish you all the best in your endeavours. And please tell us when the squibbles get, you know, the, 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 the TV series gets launched or wherever you're going, every step of the way, we want to hear about it. Absolutely. You, you've been lovely. You're both very lovely people. Thank you for having me on. Oh, it's oh, been delightful. As I say, we, I could just, you know, go on all day, but I'm conscious that we do have to let you go at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Hold you hostage. Um, it really has been wonderful to talk to you and, 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 and find out about everything that you've been doing and the details have been going across the screen and details are also in the show notes. And anybody watching, you know, do connect with, with Jay, follow him, find out what he's doing. And if there are any supporters out there, uh, especially in the TV space, come along and talk. Investors. Today, funders, investors. Money. And got money. Bring your money. <laughs> in a bucket. Yeah, for this show. Bring your money. <laughs> Show us the money. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to see uh, the Scribbles developed into something great because I think it's got huge loads of potential. But thank you, Jay. Thank you to our viewers for joining us for another session of On the Couch. But until next time, we'll see you.